Warmly welcome all of those tuning into our live stream. Thank you for taking the time to worship with us. In one, in one sentence, Advent is about waiting in the wilderness and pointing the way to Jesus, the Anointed One. So this second week of Advent, that is our focus, learning to wait in the wilderness and pointing the way to Jesus, the Anointed One. So I've been thinking about my own experiences of waiting. And I wonder what your stories of waiting are. One of my worst experiences was when I was a student in a place called Grahamstown. It was a 14-hour bus trip from Johannesburg. And so you know what it's like. It's the smallest seats ever designed by humankind. So you lean against the window, have a nap for a while, lean forward, have a nap for a while, turn to the other side, have a nap for a while. And then you're convinced at least four hours have passed. And then you glance at your watch and it's only been 30 seconds. Those 14 hour journeys were a very long wait until the destination. And I learned something important about myself. I'm not good at waiting. Least of all on a Greyhound bus packed to the rafters with, uh, yeah, let's say no more. So I've always wondered how I would fare in the Stanford Marshmallow exper experiment. You've heard of that? So some researchers in Stanford a couple of years ago take a group of preschool children, four to six years of age, they lock them in a room, there's only one table, and they put in front of them one marshmallow. And they say, oh, you can have the marshmallow, but I have to leave the room for 15 minutes, and if you can wait until I come back, you can have two marshmallows. And you can download what happens next on YouTube. Two-thirds of the children gobbled up the marshmallow in seconds. To be fair, some of them waited 13 minutes before eating the marshmallow. Only one third were able to wait the return and so have two marshmallows. So for months afterwards, a lot of Stanford students would walk around the university with these shirts that said, don't eat the marshmallow. <laughs> Of course, no research is black and white, and it's open to critique, but they discovered that the one-third of the children that were able to have delayed gratification, all of them went on to lead remarkably successful lives. How would you do with the marshmallow experiment? <laughs> How good would your waiting be? So Advent is one long marshmallow experience. Advent is about waiting in the wilderness, but pointing the way to Jesus. It goes without saying that 2020 has been a wilderness in which the whole planet has waited in for a year. There were three numbers in conversation. 13 said, I'm the worst number. 666 said, no, I'm the worst number and 2020 walked past and laughed. <laughs> COVID, lockdown, social isolation, and quarantine have been their own kind of wilderness waiting hell. It's like a never-ending bus trip from Johannesburg to Grahamstown. Many here, I'm sure, would gladly exchange lockdown and isolation for John the Baptist's camel hair jumper and bugs and honey. If Advent is about practicing our waiting in the wilderness, by this stage, many on our planet are wilderness waiting athletes. Waiting in the wilderness is tough. Although we in New South Wales have had high rates of COVID, our nightmare was certainly not as long as Melbourne's 
or the rest of Europe who have recently returned to lockdown. I don't know that I could handle it again. So what did people do in the waiting wilderness of lockdown? Social media is littered with people's creative ingenuity and we can be grateful for their wit that kept us amused during lockdown. Did the social media clip with the two Labradors come up on your feed? Two Labradors, Mabel and Olive? And a social sports commentator had lost work. And so he started commentating on Mabel and, and Olive, his dogs. Hilarious. He's now written a book. Some other social media things were far less helpful. All these self-help motivators who pressurized us to learning a new skill or craft during lockdown. When you are trying to work from home or you've lost your job because of COVID or you've lost your friends because you are isolated or you are trying to homeschool your kids or look after an elderly parent or spouse and get them through COVID alive, upskilling is perhaps the least helpful advice that can be offered. I don't care how good home-baked sourdough bread tastes. So we, at this stage in our planet's history, are already in a wilderness. Our wilderness is COVID, climate change, bushfire season, recession. Advent places high demands on our waiting in the wilderness. What are we meant to be doing with our waiting? We don't have to learn a new skill. We don't have to have well-ordered lives with military routines. However, our waiting isn't passive either. Advent is about waiting, but pointing the way to Jesus, the Anointed One. The reason the 14 hours on the bus from Johannesburg to Grahamstown felt so long was because it was passive waiting. I just wanted it to be over. It was something I had to endure before re reaching my destination. Now, in contrast, I've thought about this, the preschool children in that Stanford experience, experiment, the one third that were successful, they were successful because their waiting wasn't passive. There's video clips of what they did. One child fell asleep, had a nap for the 15 minutes. Other children sang. Other children walked around the room. One child sniffed and smelt and looked at the marshmallow from every possible direction before putting it down and picking it up again and repeating it. One child ate the inside of the marshmallow, but left the outside intact. <laughs> so her stats are good, but you just got to watch her. <laughs> so likewise, our waiting in Advent isn't passive. It's an active waiting. Advent is not something we have to get through before we arrive at Christmas in time to fight with all our relatives we haven't seen for a year and melt in the sun and all the rest of that. The Advent period is an active period. It's about pointing the way to Jesus, the Anointed One. And with John the Baptist, Advent people proclaim the good news. And make no mistake, this pointing to the Jesus, the Anointed One, this active waiting in Advent, it's not some religious pastime, and neither is it a new age hobby. To stay present in the wilderness, waiting and pointing to Jesus, preaching the good news, means that you take a, a stand against toxic political powers. You challenge the economic status quo, and you rewrite history with an unfamiliar perspective. Mark's Gospel shows us how. It launches right in. The opening words, the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. In one powerful sentence, Mark's gospel has exploded. 
He has taken a, sca a stand against toxic political powers. He has challenged the status quo and he has rewritten history with an unfamiliar perspective. This is the background. In 31 BCE, history buffs, what happened? 31 BCE, Octavia conquers Mark Anthony. The famous poem by Gaddafi, the gods abandon Anthony. Over your heads, what about Leonard Cohen's leaving Alexandra, based on the same thing? So in 31 BCE, Octavia conquers Mark Anthony. It was a bit of a civil war. They were both trying to, you know, be king of the castle, something like that. So he, he conquers Mark Anthony, and it's the beginning of a new period in history, so they say. Octavia gets named as Augustus. He's the son of God. He's the anointed one. He's the sacred one. And his, his reign is now considered the new world order, a time of prosperity and peace and the end of civil strife. Coins announcing his victory and his new status as the Son of God, the Sacred One, the Anointed One, and the beginning of the New World era of peace and prosperity, these coins are minted and sent throughout the region where the Roman empires are in power. Guess what these coins are called? Evangelions. Guess what Evangelion means? Ev ev evangelical. Evangelion, the good news. So can you see what Mark is doing in the gospel? He's saying in the beginning. So Jesus the Christ is the new beginning, not Octavia. The good news. Jesus is the good news. Not Augustus Caesar. In the beginning, the good news of Jesus the Christ, Jesus the anointed one. What comes next? In the beginning, the good news of Jesus Christ, the son of God. Jesus is the son of God not Augustus. He's made a very powerful stance against toxic political powers, toxic understanding of how the economy works, and we join him. The kingdom of God is the new world order, the good news, not Rome. The kingdom of God is closer than you think, Mark says. It is at hand. The kingdom of God is so close, it is within you. It is within you as your true and authentic self. So guarded by this inner self, which, which we all have, the kingdom of God within. The kingdom of God is at hand, it is within. You have been proclaiming the good news all week. As Barbara Brown Taylor writes, preaching is not something that an ordained minister does for 20 minutes on Sunday. Sorry, it's 20 minutes in America. In Australia, we've only got 10 minutes. I'll start again. Preaching is not something that an ordained minister does for 20 minutes on a Sunday, but what the whole congregation does all week long. Preaching is a way of approaching the world and of gleaning God's presence there. So like John the Baptist, you have been proclaiming the good news. You have been pointing to the true kingdom of God that is not Rome. Some of you proclaim the good news through the unconditional love you show children and grandchildren. I know what a challenge that can be. Some of you preach God's good news, and God's healing and presence through the people you visit and the volunteering you do. Some of you preach the good news through charitable giving and being generous with your finances. Some of you preach hope and faith through your friendship and support to neighbours and strangers. And some of you preach the good news simply through taking the time to phone someone. And you didn't know that that phone call saved them from a dark tunnel of loneliness or dissolved the fog of their isolation. And so we are living in a critical time in human history. And our preaching is urgently needed now. And so as you wait in the wilderness called Advent, how are you proclaiming the good news?